Hi, my name is Josh, and today I'll be introducing you to Python. In this part of the video, you'll learn what Python is and why it's used. You'll also be learning how to set up your Python environment through a tool known as Jupyter Notebook. So let's get started with Python. So what is Python? According to Wikipedia, Python is a widely used, high-level, general-purpose, interpreted dynamic programming language. To keep things short, Python is a high-level programming language that must be interpreted by a program, also known as an interpreter, in order for the computer to understand your instructions. Have you seen that person before? Guido Van Rossum is the creator of the Python programming language. As of today, there are two major versions of Python, Python 2.7 and Python 3.5. Throughout this course, we will be using Python 3.5's syntax. Python is a high-level language, and because of that, most of the things that we will be doing are easier, since they are abstracted compared to any other low-level languages like C or Java. We don't even need to deal with each variable type, such as booleans, integers, shorts, etc. Not only that, Python also enforces strict coding style, which can be good because your code will be extremely readable to you, and you can spot errors more easily. Also, Python has a thriving community of contributors and third-party application developers. The Python Package Index hosts thousands of third-party modules for Python. There are endless possibilities for these modules. Name an area or field, and there's most likely at least one package written for it. And most importantly, the packages are usually open source. Here are a few companies who use Python in their day-to-day -day work processes. Fun fact, Guido Van Rossum works for Dropbox right now. Next, let's look at what Python is mostly used for. First, let's discuss the applications of Python in web development. Python has web frameworks such as Django and Pyramid, which makes it easier to build web applications quickly with less code. Python's standard library supports many internet protocols, which include HTML, XML, JSON, FTP, and IMAP. Beautiful Soup is a toolkit for dissecting a document and extracting what you need. It doesn't take much code to write an application. It converts incoming documents into Unicode and outgoing documents to UTF-8. Feed parser can be used for parsing RSS and Atom feeds. Let's discuss the packages in Python helpful for scientific and numeric computing. NumPy is the fundamental package for scientific computing with Python. It is useful to create powerful n-dimensional array objects. NumPy comes with various capabilities such as linear algebra, Fourier transforms, and random number generation. SciPy is a collection of packages for mathematics, science, and engineering. Pandas is a data analysis and modeling library. OpenCV is a library used for image processing and computer vision, especially when computational efficiency is important. The Python Imaging Library adds image processing capabilities to your Python interpreter. This library supports many file formats and provides image processing and graphics capabilities, but this is far less powerful than OpenCV. Matplotlib is a Python 2D plotting library which produces publication quality figures in a variety of hard copy formats in interactive environments across platforms. Scikit-learn is a simple and efficient tool for data mining and data analysis, which is built on top of NumPy, SciPy, and Matplotlib. PyDoop is a Python interface to Hadoop, the tool that's used for big data analysis in distributed environments. It allows you to write MapReduce applications and interact with HDFS in pure Python. Now let's discuss the packages in Python helpful for GUI creation. WX Widgets allows Python programmers to create programs with a robust, highly functional graphical user interface easily. It is implemented as a Python extension module that wraps the popular WX Widgets cross-platform GUI library, which is written in C++. PyQt brings together the Qt C++ cross-platform application framework and the cross-platform interpreted language Python. Let's discuss a few other interesting packages. Pygame is a Python module designed for writing video games. Pyglet is a 3D animation and game creation engine. This is the engine in which the famous Python port of Minecraft was made. Nose is a testing framework for Python. It is used by millions of Python developers. It is a must-have if you work on test-driven development. Jupyter Notebook is an application that allows you to create and share documents that contain live code, equations, visualizations, and explanatory text. A notebook is a document which contains your live code. Each notebook needs to run on a platform known as a kernel. In our case, the kernel will always be Python 3, since we are typing Python 3's syntax into the notebook. 
For this to work, let's set up our environment. We will download a program called Anaconda, and this will install the Jupyter Notebook, which handles more than 400 of the most popular Python packages for science, math, engineering, and data analysis. Head to the link and download and install Python 3.5's version of Anaconda. Next, you'll realize that a program called Launcher has been installed on your system. Open it up and click on the Launch button for IPython Notebook. Note that the version of the notebook may defer here. Don't worry about that. When you've clicked on the Launch button, a web browser leading to a locally hosted web page will be open for you. Head to the New button and click on Python 3. A new notebook will be created for you. You will see a large gray box in front of you prefixed by an IN with brackets. This is known as a cell in the notebook. After typing code into the cell, all you need to do is click on the play button to run the code in the cell as shown in this slide. Now try typing print hello world and click on the play button. Let's explore a little bit more about Python. In cell 2, we just added one number to the other. Notice that when you press run, the interpreter just interprets your code and returns the output, which is 3. We need to be aware that division in Python is integer-based. This means that Python will interpret any division as integer division, unless you explicitly specify that either one of the numbers, or both, are floating point numbers, numbers with decimals. This can be illustrated in cell 3. Also, booleans in Python are denoted by true and false. Note that the first letter is uppercase. Finally, take a look at cell 5. Here we declare a variable named number and assign an integer 6 to it. On the next line, we wrote an if statement that says something like, if number is greater than 3, then proceed. Take note of the colon here. Next, we print to the console if the statement is true. Now take note that there are four spaces or a tab before the print statement. From looking at cell 5, we can infer that Python requires us to insert a colon at the end of every if statement. Unlike braces in languages like Java or C, the colon in Python is the one that determines the start of a block. Any code inside the block must be indented with four spaces or a tab. This is the strict coding style that we mentioned earlier.